One of the most useful things in mathematics is the transition between an algebraic representation of something and a geometric representation of something. In other words, it is the difference between a formula or an equation and a picture. And this shows up in the topic of graphing equations. So when we graph an equation, if we have an equation in two variables, x and y, we can form the graph of the equation by identifying all points whose x and y coordinates make the equation a true state. And in other words, if I find a point with coordinates x and y that make the equation true, this is going to be a point on the graph of the equation. And any point that makes the equation false should not be a point on the graph. For example, let's consider this. I have a couple of possible points and I have this graph of whatever this looks like. And so I want to know whether these points are on the graph of this equation. And so that's an easy determination. I check uh, if I take a look at the point at 0, 0. My x coordinate is 0. My y coordinate is 0. So if I substitute these into the equation and get a true statement, I have a point on the graph. Otherwise, I don't. So there's my equation. And what I want to know, because I don't know for certain, is whether x equals 0, y equals 0 makes this statement true. So I'll let x equals 0, I'll substitute that in. y is equal to 0, so I'll substitute that in. x is 0, so I'll substitute that in. y, 0, substitute that in. And I'll do a little bit of arithmetic. That's going to be 0 from the left, 0 on the right, and it is in fact true that 0 equals 0. So substituting these values into my equation gives me a true statement, and so the point is on the graph. Well, what about that other point, this point 1, negative 1? Well, my x-coordinate is 1, my y-coordinate is negative 1, so I want to substitute in x equals 1, y equals negative 1 into the equation and see if I get a true statement. So again, I have my equation. Now, x is 1, so I'll substitute that in. y is negative 1, so I'll substitute that in. And so I'll have my new expressions here. Left-hand side, 1 squared plus 1 squared is 1 plus 1 is 2 squared is 2. And I get 4. And but the big question is, is 4 equal to 2? And uh, no. So this is a false statement, so my point 1, negative 1 is not a point on the graph of the equation. Well, I might actually want to graph the equation rather than checking to see whether a particular point is on the graph of the equation. So here's a general procedure for that. Rather than trying to find random points, it's easier to actually locate points on the graph by the following method. What we're going to do is we're going to choose a value for one of the variables, either x or y, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll substitute this into the equation, giving us an equation in one variable. And we'll do a little bit of algebra and we'll solve the equation for the other variable. And this will give us a set of coordinates for a point. So for example, let's consider the equation 3x minus 4y equals 36. And the two points that I might want to find are the x and the y intercepts. Now those are the points where the graph crosses either the x or the y axis. So the x intercept is going to be where the graph crosses the x axis. And if I'm on the x axis, then any point on the x-axis will have y-coordinate 0. So because any point on the x-axis has y equals 0, I'll let y equals 0 in my equation and solve for x. So there's my equation. I'm going to allow y to be 0. And I get the equation 3x equals 36. 4 times 0 is 0. 3x equals 36. And I'll solve for x by dividing both sides by 3, and I'll get x equals 12. And what this tells me is that y equals 0, x equals 12 makes this a true statement. Then the point where y equals 0, x equals 12 is a point on the graph. Now remember, we specify the coordinates by giving the horizontal distance the x-coordinate first. So this is going to be the point x-coordinate 12, y coordinate 0, and the point 12, 0 is the x intercept. Now, how about the y intercept? Well, any point on the y axis will have x equal to 0, so I'll substitute x equals 0 into the equation and solve for y. 
So there's my equation once again. I'll let x be 0. I'll do a little bit of arithmetic cleanup. Negative 4y equals 36. Divide by negative 4. y equals negative 9. And now I know that the point where x is equal to 0, y equal to negative 9, that's going to make the equation a true statement. So the point where x equals 0, y equals negative 9, will also be on the graph. And again, when I give the coordinates of a point, I want to identify the x-coordinate first, the horizontal distance first, the y-coordinate next, x equals 0, y equals negative 9, and my point is going to be 0, negative 9, and that's going to be my y-intercept. So I found the x and y-intercepts. Now we can graph the line between the two of them. So I need two points, which I have, and so I'll go ahead and graph them. I'll set down the origin. I'll set down my principal direction. And it's convenient to also have a perpendicular direction there. Now I'll emphasize that perpendicular direction is mainly for convenience, mainly to make sure we're going in the right direction when we move off the principal direction. So let's see. So my first point is at 12, 0. Now there is an art to graphing, and the art is this. The thing we should focus on is sign and direction, and we should worry less about magnitude. Uh, so here, this point 12, 0, as a set of directions, that says positive first coordinate. I'm going to go to the right some distance, but I'm not going to go any place vertically. So I'm going to be on the principal axis. So I'll go right some distance, and there's my point, and the first point, 12, 0. Uh, since we want to make sure that nobody can understand what we've done, well, actually, we want to make sure that our work is as clear as possible. So what we should always do, anytime we put down a point, we always want to put down the coordinates of that point. This is going to be the point 12, 0. Likewise, my second point, 0, negative 9. And again, sign and direction are going to be the important things. We'll worry less about magnitude. 0 says I go right 0 from the origin. I don't go any place right or left. Negative 9 says I'm going to go down by 9 units. So don't go any place right or left, but go down 9 units someplace around here. There's our point, and because we want to make our work very clear, we're going to label that point with the coordinates 0, negative 9. Since we want to graph the line between the two points, then we have our two points. We'll draw the line in between those two points, and again, you never want to put anything down on a graph without labeling what it is. This is the line between the two points. This is going to be our labeled by our equation, 3x minus 4y equals 36. And there's our graph. Well, let's take a look at another example. So I want to find two different points on the graph of y equals 2 thirds x plus 7 and then graph them. So we're not looking for specific points like the x or y intercept, so we can just pick values for variables and solve for the other one. And we can read this equation as a formula for y once you know the value of x. So it's easiest if we pick a value for x here and then calculate what the value of y is. So since we get to pick whatever value we want, we should pick values like well, x equals 3,983.1398743, which are very hard to work. Well, I get to pick that value of x, so maybe I'll pick something easy. Uh, how about x equals 0? Uh, so I'll let x equals 0, and my formula says y equals 2 thirds x plus 7, y equals 2 thirds times 0 plus 7, 0 plus 7, y equals 7. So the point where x equals 0, y equals 7 is on the graph of the equation. And I could pick a different value for x, like, oh, I don't know, x equals pi plus the fifth root of 11. Uh, uh, let's pick something easy. Um, I'm multiplying by 2 thirds. So what I might want to do is I might want to pick a value of x that I can multiply easily by 2 thirds. Uh, so for example, if x equals 3, 2 thirds times 3 is an easy computation. So y equals 2 thirds x plus 7, y equals 2 thirds times 3 plus 7, 2 thirds times 3 is easy to calculate, that 3 will cancel, I'll be left with 2 plus 7, y equals 9, and I have a second point where x equals 3, y equals 9. So there's a second point on the graph of the equation. 
and I'll graph my two points. So again, my origin and principal directions look something like that. My first point, 0, 7, follow the directions to the point. 0 units to the right, and then 7 units up. Don't go right or left, but go up someplace. My point is up here someplace. Again, plot the point and label. My second point is 3, 9, go over 3 and 9. And here you might want to get at least a little bit of the magnitude correct. Here I went up 7 to the point. If I'm going to go up 9, I should go a little farther up. And so my point over 3, up 9, over 3, up 9 should be a little higher than this point. Maybe up there someplace and label it. And finally, I'm going to draw the line through the points and label it with the equation. So there's my line, and there's my equation, x equals 2 thirds x plus 7.